High above the flooded rice fields that are iconic fixtures throughout Thailand, even higher than the cornfields that cling to the mountainside, there is a crop that is finding a new home amongst the tribal communities in the hill country. Coffee. A $100 billion industry, coffee consumption has doubled in the past 15 years. Known to grow better in higher elevations, coffee thrives in areas like northern Thailand. Caleb Jordan of Jim Forest Coffee uses coffee for more than making a living. He has found ways to use coffee to impact his community economically and more importantly, spiritually. So one of my earliest memories was when I was two years old. I watched my dad roast coffee in like a hand-turned drum over a charcoal fire. And it's just like this random memory that stuck with me. And I, I don't know why, I mean, it's just, I was fascinated by it. I don't remember much from when I was two, but I remember that. It's just, it must have hit me like, wow, that's so cool, you know? What's so rewarding about this, just being in the coffee business is both being able to pursue excellence and be involved in kind of like an, an art form almost and do something really special, make something really, you know, that people appreciate and enjoy and is unique, but also just that you can help improve people's lives with it and you can display just God's character through what, you know, what we're called to do. You know, coffee just makes people happy on a lot of levels, you know. It makes the farmers happy when they get a good crop. It makes the guy that uh, likes drinking really good coffee happy when he gets something special in his cup. For all intended purposes, I'm really just, you know, a farmer, coffee, you know, not, nothing special, but I get the chance to talk to governors and even royalty sometimes just because you know, I'm doing a good job making coffee. I think one of the things I find really rewarding is just the, the doors it opens, the people that I get access to that I would never have access to if I wasn't in the coffee business. Yeah, being in business, you learn to depend on other businesses. You know, you can't just be a standalone business, especially with coffee. It's such a long chain of development, you know. You know, you have to have a network in place for coffee to be successful. I mean, just in the coffee chain of production itself. I mean, you have the agriculture side, then you have all the processing and all the um, infrastructure and mechanics required to get that done right. And, and all these different steps can be made into businesses. For us to do coffee, one of the businesses we depend on the most is obviously coffee shops that, that buy our coffee. I mean, that's, you know, just one coffee roaster needs dozens of coffee shops just to just to sell their coffee to make make their profit that they need to keep going. So there's just a whole slew of other businesses, everything from graphic design businesses, web development, print shops to get our stuff printed. You know, I even depend on a lot of machine shops to get our stuff done. So I mean, it, it ties together a lot of businesses, a lot of different skill sets. One of the things I'm starting to pursue now is you know, teaching, I've got a couple young guys that work for me building coffee roasters. And, you know, these are, you know, they're not interested in agriculture at all. They don't care about, some of them don't even drink coffee, but they love machines. They love making stuff out of metal, and I love that too. So I can teach them skills they need, and it, and it gives them a job, you know. Coffee opens a lot of doors.